Welcome guys, I hope uh, the enthusiasm is up and uh, this is the first panel so hopefully the interest levels are high and uh, the reputation quotient is very low. So let's be fortunate to give these guys a great uh, interesting insightful session. So today we are here to celebrate the power of connection, making CTV advertising work for brands. As the world evolves with entwined ecosystem of internet connected devices, it's imperative for advertisers and marketers to stay ahead of the curve and get future ready with connected TV. We stand today as the highest populated country in the world, surpassing China. We are the second highest app downloading country in the world as well. And now we are catching up on the connected TV foray. The reports say we're going to be 40 million, but clearly now geo entering the foray, it may not be the same numbers that were predicted sort of a couple of years back. How brands can leverage the power of this innovative technology and reach their target audience with precision optimize their full funnel strategy and overcome challenges and I'd be ahead of these emerging trends to create engaging ads that resonate with viewers is what we'll be discussing today. So let's dive deep in. I have a very diverse panel and I'm going to start with a very generic and very common question to everyone. Connected TV has been touted as the future of television for a while now. And as more consumers shift to streaming devices and services and connected TV, how do you see advertising landscape changing over the next decade with new formats and technologies, what do you think will emerge and how can brands stay ahead? So Anil Pandit, we'll start with you and you've had a very diverse experience. What are your thoughts? Okay, thanks Nikhil. I think uh, CTV is for sure here to exist, right? And the, the numbers, I think we are all seeing a lot of numbers on CTV, right? Or around CTV, right? Uh, 9 out of 10 devices which are being bought are CTV devices. Uh, there is a CAG, uh, the growth of CTV ad spends, right, is growing by 47% year on year. Uh, and it's touted to become $395 million by 2027, right. And it's not just a metro phenomenon, right. We're seeing it happening even in non-metro. Now, when we look at all these numbers, and it's surely that CTV devices, the audiences, the watch time, right? It has gone up around, what, around four minutes or so? Four hours or so, yeah. So I think if the consumers are present on these devices, right, media dollars or ad dollars have to follow, right? I think that's, that's important. It starts with the consumer, it should end with the consumer being targeted in the right way. Perfect. Um... Yatnish, what are your thoughts? Future of television and how do you see the landscape changing from having a bird's eye view of your media mix and things that you've been seeing or meeting your advertising fraternity? I think uh, there has never been the time before when you have uh, so much content to watch and uh, there is so many ways to reach to the audience. So I think this kind of the new CTV trends are going to stay. And especially the challenger brand or the hard marketing category like us. We are not the brand where you have to just watch and then you can take the click and action. For us, always the awareness is the inconsideration and we have to make for the large reach. So this kind of the new emerging media is always help us to build the reach into the, our audience. Because that's, we are not just only working on to the lower of the funnel. We always work on to the inconsideration set. And for us, the CTV kind of the media is going to work. Thanks, Yatnish. Sid? Let's have a long one on this. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, a question to the audience, if you can raise hands uh, who are paying the cable TV uh, per month subscription right now. How many of you are paying cable TV subscription? Or got it recharged. That's also one way of doing it. That's one hand amidst the entire room. Yeah, so, you know, that's, that, you know, it's... <laughs> May, yeah, maybe uh, someone in your house may be paying for it. Uh, is that the case? <laughs> but uh, uh, in all likelihood, because I can see, you know, even my mom, uh, you know, for my mom, for, on my mom's TV, uh, you know, we have her cable subscription as well. But she's like, almost like last month she told me that we probably we should stop paying on this because most of the stuff I'm watching on my, uh, you know, on streaming because I can watch it anytime, right? I can watch my serials also anytime because most of the content has also now shifted uh, because consumers are shifting and it's very clearly evident from here as well. And uh, just to add one more uh, data point here, so 
uh, at MIQ, we, uh, we operate in 30 plus countries and we have a global view as well about this phenomenon. And we have a, like a TV intelligence panel for all the countries we operate in. And for, uh, you know, it's, a, it's like a brand specific uh, intelligence hub as well. So uh, most of the brands, uh, when we look at uh, where their audience is, in the last three years, we have seen the shift that, you know, earlier it was like 30% on uh, connected TV and 70% on linear TV. In three years time, in most of the markets, it is now reversed. 70% on connected TV and 30% on linear TV. So audiences in all markets are shifting. Uh, and it's a basic human behavior probably uh, because of the convenience, because of the plethora of content coming there. Uh, and uh, yeah, meaning the whole, whole uh, digital ecosystem obviously has evolved. And in India in particular, because our data rates are very low, uh, TVs, smart TVs are very, very affordable as well. So the whole ecosystem is in place uh, and hence uh, numbers are quite big and uh, day before yesterday we were in an uh, event in Bangalore related to connected TV and uh, some of the numbers which are there are in the range of now about 25 to 35 million households in India and every household is three and a half person watching that TV. Uh, so it's a big number, uh, right? So it's coming closer to 80 to 100 million. Uh, so it's a quite a big number and of course the audience who is watching is also premium audience, uh, affordability is high. Uh, so yeah, meaning in all respect probably, uh, meaning dollars will, add dollars will also follow which you have seen in all of the markets as well. I think great, I'll sort of add a couple of points if we move to Karan. I think fundamentally you're absolutely right, I think. First for your mom, I think she must have read, seen some of your interviews and she said, you know, good things start from home, so let's cut the cord. But I think apart from that, I think, uh, on the pricing part, you're absolutely right as well. I mean, if you compare the linear TV pricing, and if you look at an average subscription per month that a user pays, and multiply that by 12, and then you look at the top six or eight OTTs, which are SWOD or AWOD, and the kind of content they provide to you for free, you do the maths, I'm telling you. It's, it's not expensive, okay? And What's interesting for connected TV is I think two things. One, I think over the last two years, we were talking about it earlier when we were having a coffee that, you know, what has happened is we're always going to be a post-pandemic and pre-pandemic era. I mean, two years of regimentalization of watching content, there was nothing to watch. How much of Kapil Sharma could you watch on repeat, right? There is nothing to watch. There is no content getting shot. You had to switch off the TV because it was a very pessimistic environment in terms of the news that was coming in. The only similar kind of reports were getting shared. And people wanted a freshness of things and which is where they realized, oh, could I watch sacred games? What? With my family or not with my family? Depends on how cool the family is. And then they moved on to more content and more content and more content and so many things which were not even popular at a point of time. They got released in 2013. An epic flop, you know, probably for Hulu or Netflix. Came back, resurfaced, was the biggest hit, right? And you realize content, the way people wanted to see it also changed because today as a user, and the lives we lead is not about, you know, I want to watch Big Boss at 8.30. If you don't watch it at 8.30, you will miss half of it. You'll say, okay, now I will watch it on OTT, I'll switch. I will watch it when I want to watch it. So you don't tell me how to do it. So I think fundamentally these, these shifts have happened and happy to hear your thoughts, you know. I mean, how do you look at it from your perspective as everybody talking about, obviously, I know that we are in a connected TV panel and we can't diss it, but how big is it? I mean, do you really feel it's, it's in a space that it requires this amount of media conversations or discussions? Uh, so I think uh, generally it does, uh, you know, there's a serious threat here that we see uh, as far as time spent and consumption patterns are concerned. So let's, let's go just point by point. <clears throat> Firstly, I think connected TV, affordability wise, there's no challenge. It's just uh, very similar to a mobile phone also right now in some of the brands which we have. That's one advantage. Second, in terms of picture quality, you have got 4K, which is, you know, far superior as compared to the normal TV that you would have. And you look, if you look at platform side as well, Geo Cinema started IP on 4K. I think more and more content will start coming on 4K. So for changing superior quality of content also, people will transition to connected TV. But there are two, three caveats here, you know, or risk rather I feel, you know, in terms of connected TV scaling up in a country like India. Uh, one big challenge is around data, right? So wired broadband is something, the penetration numbers are very low in a country like India. Of course, Geo Fiber, uh, you know, has done a phenomenal job. They have a 40% market share as far as fiber is concerned. They've made it affordable. They've cut the pricing as well. 
but can we actually watch seamless content? I'm not talking about the urban households or you know people staying in some part of uh, the metro city. Uh, can we actually watch seamless content on a pan India basis? Can the audience actually watch that? I think that's a multiple. So I think you'll have to mirror the broadband penetration numbers and then peg that to the smart TV growth numbers or connected TV growth numbers because that's one very big caveat. Second thing, from advertising standpoint, I believe definitely there's a huge opportunity, you know, for connected TV to gain share within the TV advertising universe. Uh, but you have to really get good measurement systems in place because if you look at TV right now, uh, they are kind of on the verge of struggling. We've got Bark, I mean, uh, you know, but that's more led to sampling about 40,000, 50,000 boxes that we have. So uh, we can actually generate a very good measurement system on connected TV as compared to what we have on Bark. That's the second risk which I see. Uh, third risk is, of course, uh, you know, if we speak about the proposition of connected TV, it is expensive in nature. So if you look at TV as a medium, I think you have to pay 3 to 400 rupees in terms of ARPU. You get 800 channels, you get a huge variety of content to watch. In the case of connected TV, you have to pay the data bills, which could range anywhere close to 600, 700 rupees on a monthly basis. Then comes the subscription services, which could be bundled or, you know, every OTT platform. So connected TV that way is a very expensive proposition. And uh, we are talking of, you know, almost 3 to 4x as compared to linear TV in terms of pricing. So can connected TV actually scale up? On a, on a mass level, being so expensive in nature, that's, that's the fourth risk in my view. And last but not the least, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the digital medium, the kind of content that we are having, uh, it's more private in nature. I mean, the kind of content people want to watch is more on mobile phone. So on connected TV, I believe that, you know, there could be content like, you know, family viewing content or maybe catch up TV shows, which you would actually watch. But uh, can connected TV cater to all ends of audience and, you know, people wanting to watch all forms of audience with the family? That's again a question mark. So definitely connected TV is the future, but these are risks, you know, which need to be addressed over a period of time. If we were to reach that scale of 70, 80, 100 million households of connected TV. Fantastic, man. I think really, really interesting. It's good that somebody brings perspective because I think all positives never add up, right? I mean, uh, and I think we do a lot of panels and it's always good to have another perspective and I think some of them very valid points. So, Jay, you come uh, from, from what's the marketer's view on this? So, uh, you know, I agree to all of these points, right? We're all, I don't think anyone denies the fact that CTV is the future for all of us. But imagine a situation for you know, marketers like us who kind of want to drive our messaging to, say, the affluent audience, okay, want to kind of reach out to a certain targeted audience. This is like the, um, in fact, a lot of people say that the golden era was when you put everything on the television and then you kind of wait and watch whether it's kind of working for you or not. In fact, I feel the golden era is now because what happens is now I can actually reach the relevant audience because my, my product is for a certain affluent audience and therefore, for me, television was always a challenge, right? Getting onto television was always a question mark. Kitna spillage hai, kyun karna hai, kaise liye karna hai. All of that was always a question. But with, you know, the ability of reaching out to the relevant audience, measurability coming in, you know, content getting, you know, better and better. I mean, for us as marketeers, I don't think there is a better time to kind of look at content connected TVs in, in the future. Yeah? And that this is for the way that, I mean, depending upon who you are, right? So there are, not every brand is a Unilever, not every brand is a not every brand is a Godrich, right? There are so many other products that actually sell in the market and therefore, depending upon what your brand is and what your objectives are, CTV is going to be a lot of more useful for people like us. And I don't think that it's going to kind of replace, I think, again, I, like we were having this discussion at the coffee, right? I mean, it's going to be a, a, a situation where both will exist, right? And depending upon the objective, even at my level, the objective is awareness, pure reach. Of course, linear TV makes a lot of sense for me. But beyond awareness and reach, I'll have to look at, you know, places where I can be more relevant and more targeted. That's where CTV actually doubles up and helps me, you know, reach the right audience. Yeah, great. I think somewhere someone decided, and I think what you're saying is quite right, Sajay, because I think markets like US actually operate in a very similar way. There is absolutely no 100% of anything because technically they all coexist and then you look at advertising or your ad format as a medium. So let's say if you have a video ad format, what are the various screens it can go to, yeah. right? And then TV is a TV. So if TV is your medium of reach, it could be a linear TV or it could be a connected TV. It's both has its share of audiences and very relevant point, I think very thoughtful. Let me, let me go back to Anil, which is on my extreme, right? I mean, publicists, I mean, you represent publicity, right? I mean, and, and with your own vast experience, you're quite a spokesperson on various trends in advertising over the years. And 
You've you witnessed the transformation of media, right? You've seen how many consumption trends have come, some things have become fad, some things haven't. I mean, you've seen the new digital era, you've seen the post-pandemic era. It's, it's exciting because we've been in this journey and you know we've talked so many times before. So what are the key changes that you personally have observed as an expert within the digital or programmatic domain? And you've been advocating at least your advertising fraternity or if not your clients, you know, at least uh, neutrally. Good question, Nikhil. That takes me, my memories back to 2013-14. I remember when we used to present to the clients, there was one slide on programmatic which says, we said that uh, traditional channels are going to foray into uh, programmatic. And uh, one of them was, of course, TV, other being DOH and audio. And now we're talking about CTV now, programmatic CTV. So I think a lot of, lot of uh, changes have happened. A lot of water has gone to the bridge. <clears throat> but what I, uh, if I recollect and look at what has changed, uh, initially when we used to do, uh, say, YouTube advertising, right, we used to just see what percentage of that got into, say, CT, uh, YouTube CTV. Then we used, started having a YouTube line item, right, separate, a YouTube uh, CTV line item. Today, we're talking about CTV strategy as a whole, right? I think, again, it goes back to the same thing. Consumers have shifted. The way they are consuming content has transformed and it's a sea change, right? And hence, uh, marketers have to take notice of that as well. Then there was a question, of course, when it came into programmatic, uh, there was a lot of fragmentation. There is a lot of fragmentation even today, right? That needs to be addressed for sure. To a certain extent, that has been addressed by programmatic, but a lot needs to be covered up still, right? IAB came up with uh, IFAs, right? Identifier for advertisers. That was crucial because from the privacy point of view. Now, while that has come into being, that, that is also an instrument in helping consolidate a lot of these CTV buying that is happening programmatically, right? So a lot of changes have happened. A lot of changes are due to happen. And if you actually look at what is happening in US, right, uh, the TV upfronts that has happened this year, uh, CTV is a very, very important portion of that, right? So I was just reading some data. So the linear, seat, uh, the linear TV upfronts, right, have remained almost stagnant since 2019 in US, while the CTV upfronts have increased by 195% right, since 2019. So while it's of use, this, this data is of US, but it does ring a bell of what, is the, uh, what will come here in India as well. So definitely we are, the, ad, the agencies, the advertisers that we have, the advertisers that we have, we are working with them very closely. And one mantra to all of them is of course, try it, do pilots, fail fast, learn fast. You know what will work for you, what doesn't work for you. Uh, you need to have your own art and science of using CTV strategy, as I was saying earlier. And what may work for you now may not work for you, say, six, six months down the line. Or what may work for you may not work for the other brand, as, as Sujay was saying, that it has to be very specific. You need to see your audience, your strategy, whether it works for you or not. Right? Some of these things can become fired really fast, right? And when he, we were sitting here yesterday at another CTV panel where somebody just called out, I'll not name it, but I think virtual reality is something which never took off, you know. I mean, it's been around for almost six, seven years and people have been talking about it and it's just not taken off. Do you think pro probably connected TV is so small in the schematics of reach? I mean, technically, if you are fundamentally a large conglomerate which does TV advertising, you're saying, okay, man, hang on. When it gets there, we'll talk about it. Do you think we are in that stage or I think the page is already turned uh, with Geo entering the foray and IPL fundamentally really getting everybody to clearly distinguish between Star Sports or connected TV or mobile penetration via uh, IPL Geo? What is, what is your thought? Sorry, I didn't get it. The, the, so, are we here now or I think is it, is it three years down the line the page is yet to turn in terms of scale and reach and so scale, importance? See, I think there is a lot of question on scale, right? Uh, I would relate it to that there is scale, the scale will go up, but the most important thing is how do, as brands and advertisers, 
they are able to consolidate this, right? And programmatic is the only way if you look at consolidating all the inventory, right, in a more efficient way. That is the only way out. Otherwise, you will have pockets of this CTV inventory lying across, right? But it needs to be brought together, right? And that is why, again, I'll take the example of uh, uh, US again, where with this current upfronts, 72% of the advertisers have brought, bought into programmatic CTV, right? That's, that's the way that they want to move forward to. So, but definitely scale is an issue as of now, but I think with all the numbers that we are seeing, that's going to go up drastically, right? Yatnesh, I think. Can I just yeah, add please, quickly please, on this? Just to add what Anil said, so, you know, like for us from a global revenue perspective, three years back, CTV was less than 5%. Now it is, you know, close to 40-50%, wow. right? So we have already seen the scale coming in. So for us, it is very, very real. And uh, we definitely see it's just a question of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not even a question of time. It's here and now. It's about, uh, you know, consumers are, have already leaned in. Advertisers will also, uh, you know, are leaning in or increasingly will lean in. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's here and now. For I us. think it's just one <laughs> bit please, on please. IPL as well. So, you know, if you look at IPL, they started offering on Geo Cinema free of cost. One would have thought that, you know, they'll really take over the uh, TV ad spend in a very big way. But uh, even if you really look at the numbers, I think uh, TV numbers are almost, uh, you know, 70 to 80 percent higher as compared to what digital would be. I mean, uh, I'm not saying the fact, the point I'm trying to make is that <coughs> I think the connected TV ad spends are going to come more from the digital uh, domain than from TV. Uh, because connected, until unless connected TV does not uh, move massy in nature uh, in terms of their reach, you will not see a threat on TV because TV is more massy. So you have to really move to that reach of whatever 180, 200 million households. If that were to come, then TV is at a threat. Otherwise, I think the more of the chunk of the connected TV ad spend will come from the digital advertising pie. I think also a very interesting part in this also, Karan, is that, so who is capturing this data, right? I mean, we were talking about this that, you know, fundamentally we are saying cord cutters are on the rise because we know the decline of DTS, those numbers are getting reported and we believe, oh, so DTH is declining, hence connected TV is rising. But fundamentally, there is a huge chunk of cord nevers, which is based on the number of TV sold, straight away went connected to and Wi-Fi, went to the whole connected TV stream. And fundamentally, they probably don't even know they're called connected TV users and nobody's done actually an exercise to capture that kind of data. Obviously, the smart TV sales are on the rise. I think last year reported the highest amount of smart TV sold. There was a 92% dip. I think some of the top OEMs have stopped even producing a 32-incher, right? I think they just say that experience is on the rise and we just, we are seeing the rise of 40 inches and above TV being consumed. They have enough data points on pure connection to, uh, you know, a, a Wi-Fi router and straight away consuming their content because I think this number will be very exciting. I think next year when we talk about this panel and I think while it was on a steady rise, I think with IPL, a phenomenon like IPL venturing into that space, I think, will have a very different perspective. Also, I think, uh, you know, to get this point of connected TV scaling up in terms of numbers, we also have to monitor in terms of where the India market is moving. Is India market moving towards AWOD or SWOT? Because if it's moving towards SWOT, then there's a low likelihood of this becoming massy, as I said, because it's expensive in nature. But is it moving pure play AWOD? We will never know. I mean, Geo Cinema offering the most expensive content free of cost. Uh, can this uh, move forever uh, free? Then I think connected TV is definitely scalable. But then again, are the economics sustainable? Like if you keep offering this content free of cost, is it sustainable for, you know, the other OTT apps? That's a big question mark. So AWOD, SWOT is also a big answer in terms of how the connected TV base will actually scale up. Yeah, also, I think AWOD, SWOT, the definition itself for us Indians is also skewed. Okay, so we pay money for an SWOT, but that is for watching a movie. But then you can have to see the ads on the other part of it. So it's technically yeah. SWOT. So there's one very, uh, you know, a different angle to this, right? I mean, we're all talking about the platform. We're all, we're all talking about media currently. We're all talking about serving the ads to the consumers. Uh, from a marketer lens, you know, if, if, if US is the way that we were to go and we were able to kind of start being able to, you know, uh, mark out the addressable audience for that matter and serve different copies on the same content that people are watching. Okay, the pressure that actually gets onto, I mean, not, it's not pressure, but I'm just saying that as a marketer, then you will have to also start looking at messaging very differently, right? You will have to create so many copies and 
the ability that this platform gives you to serve different copies to the same, to different audiences watching the same content is phenomenal, right? But then it's also in some way puts pressure on what your messaging overall is going to be and to kind of bring it all together under one umbrella. That's a different side of the story and as a marketer we are also aware of that and I guess maybe that's something that we might have to kind of consider. I mean, how many copies will you start making, right? And if you serve the same copy and if you serve a substandard product to an audience that is affluent, you are actually also hurting your brand. So, there are multiple dynamics actually coming into play and uh, we don't know currently how it's going to move, but yeah, looking forward, yeah. Good, I'll move to Yatnesh. I think over the years, Greenplay has delivered some fantastic hit ad campaigns. We are big fans. Thank you for that. And I think they have been funny, they have been engaging, they have been impactful. These ads have always struck a chord with the audience. And I think uh, it's always been very entertaining to see those ads. Now, we're talking about these evolved audiences, which is hyper-digital era, multi-screen. Uh, there's a constant chase of finding your audiences. I mean, for a category like yours, how do you manage and how do you look at multi-screen journeys or a uh, uh, choice of a particular medium when it comes to a category like yours? Because it's in indeed quite an exciting category, right? It's, it's a niche category. How does it evolve in your media mix? So, category like us, uh, where the consumer journey happens not only from just seeing the content or any communication of the brand, but they plan it. So, it's a very planned category and uh, though it is a high ticket size, but it's a very low involvement category. So far, it's a big challenge, like what you was mentioning about the how many content we have to create it. So umbrella content is always something which is very enjoyable, fun content. But same time, we always in the search of the medium where we can engage with them. And for that engaging, we need to look for this kind of the medium. And within the our category also, there is a categorization. So if there is a lifestyle products are there, where I can communicate with them. Then you need to have a, this kind of the category where you can do the more targeting, we can, you can do the emphasizing of the targeting audience, and then you can communicate, you can serve to them. So the one side is the creating the communication, other side is the chasing the audience with the slice of their requirement and then serving to that content. So that's the end. Uh, we don't have the, just the challenge from the internal category competition. Nowadays, we have the challenge from the all sort of. There is the online furniture brands are there. There is the life deco brands are there. There is a paint brands are there. And then within that, to make our communication, giving the impact and making the effective communication is the challenge. That's a look very interesting point, Yatnesh, because I was about to get to that, that, you know, for a category like yours, um, connected TV, does it hold relevance? I mean, there are two ways of looking at it. Technically, that's not where we want our carpenters and people to use the right kind of, but then there is also the consumer. Yes. And I think most great ads come from great consumer insights, right? Yes, yes. I mean, if the attract and pull of Greenplay is so strong that it's being advocated by the consumer to any of the, uh, uh, whether it's the online commerce interior decorators, yeah. it, it yeah. just becomes imperative. And yes. then it, even while somebody says, oh, why would they do connected TV? You would say, no, I mean, technically yes. consumer is the boss, right? I mean. Isn't that the thought process and are you guys looking at Connected TV also saying eventually that's where we need to be irrespective of the competition? It's going to help us like in terms of the targeting if we can say now whatever the data is there we can make them and then we can target them accordingly. That's the only help I think we can get it and uh, we are not going to use it. I'm going to park the test budget for this Connected TV. So far we had not used it. This is the first time we are going to plan it. But I think we are going to use it more for the brand campaign, not for this thing, because it is not going to make the transactional medium for us. It is going more for the brand campaign. So for me, it's going to deliver the incremental reach. That's it. But, uh, on this point, actually, you know, the fact that, um, uh, you know, th the usual way of deploying a full funnel strategy on whether it's imagery, awareness, and then conversion, and then, sorry, at consideration and then conversion, yeah. yeah. I mean, you still feel that maybe on CTV we're not going to be able to do this uh, to kind of finally take the consumer towards conversion? Yeah, because our product is not for the direct purchase kind of thing. It is always there are the applicators, intermediaries are there. So generally the consumer take the brand into consideration and then he takes the help from the others. So we are like an Intel inside. So generally the people don't go and they call the Intel laptop. They call the Microsoft, Dell, whatever the brand and they say there is an Intel Chip, that's a seal is there. Yeah, so we have point. to create that consideration. That's a valid point. Cool. I think I'll move on and I think, Sid, I think you've had first-hand experience, you know, I mean, on this whole growth of this connected TV ecosystem in Asia and India and across, actually, with the diverse portfolio. You've been witnessing the growth within India. 
IPL being led by Jio. How do you see advertisers, media mix getting affected in the next couple of years from linear to CTV? And also does CTV hold relevance in the whole Bharat story, which most Indian brands want to strive to reach? What are your take? Yeah, so I think there are three reasons why CTV we have seen growing across, right? So one is, you know, as uh, you were saying, uh, Yatnesh, in terms of the incremental reach, I think that number is is going to keep increasing because in India and even in Bharat also, cord cutters will keep increasing. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot of data coming from the ACR, uh, you know, technology, uh, automatic content recognition which is very, very valuable because it is very deterministic data and it gives you a lot of insights in terms of, okay, these are the households, this is the make of their TV, these are the genres which they are watching, these are the ads they have watched, uh, then, you know, also even location, uh, etc. and games uh, they are playing on connected TV. So there are a lot of signals which are coming which are very, very deterministic and that gives you a very, uh, very good view on the incremental reach which you can drive which is very, very valuable. The second is that uh, you can also, uh, you know, definitely, it's a TV, so it's a branding medium, uh, but there is also the capability of connected TV retargeting where you can sync the mobile devices in that household and then reach out, after you've done your brand campaign, you can reach out to them on mobile and get them to, you know, action, have an actionable uh, strategy around that. So, like, we have a case study with Carrot Lane where, they wanted to talk about, you know, dedicate your first salary to your mom uh, by, you know, buying a gift and the value proposition which they wanted to talk about was within 24 hours they will deliver. Uh, and then, they, so they did that brand awareness and that messaging and then, uh, and obviously it was all done with data in terms of planning who is the right household, where we should be doing it. Also online signals, who is, uh, you know, uh, browsing for online jewelry, those are the households where we will do this campaign and then retarget them on their mobile devices to uh, take advantage and actionable uh, this thing where CTRs were 20% higher than the average CTR. So you can bring the consumer in the funnel as well, which is very, very important and it's all digital as a medium. Uh, and I think the third reason why it will be, uh, it will keep growing even in Bharat is because of the fact that uh, India is a volumes market, right? And there will, there are many volume players already in the OEM space uh, who are bringing in affordable TV uh, and uh, it's, it's just a matter of time because, you know, digital content has reached everywhere in Bharat as well. And, you know, the next TV which I will buy uh, when I'm in a small village or town, it will be, you know, a connected TV. It will be connected on internet. And by default, I will start on that uh, as well because I've already been watching YouTube and OTTs on my mobile, so I'm very familiar with that ecosystem any which ways. Nikhil, I would like to add here, uh, during one of our consumer survey, what we found, the ruler market or either the tier 3 or tier 4 market, they are more going to take it this connected TV faster than this because they want to buy the TV and after that immediately want to switch on. They don't want to wait for any connection and all this thing. So even uh, during the one survey we found, he bought the TV and then immediately connected through the internet and started. So my guess is the it's going to have the more faster adoption in those markets compared to the urban and all. Oh, I think real stories, real insights, I think nothing defeats, defeats that. And I think if you look at it, I mean, statistically, look at, uh, I was reading 91% of the TVs small, sold in the last year were smart. I don't know what the remaining 9% were because I don't remember any of us seeing a box TV the last time. I don't think any of the OEMs produce anything but a smart TV or I, I don't know. I mean, most of them, the OS is already See enabled. Fire stick sales data is going on to those very deep pin codes. It's not going on to the same the tier one and tier two towns. So that shows how they are ready to adopt this thing. Actually, in, in our, let's to give you a sense of this Bharat thing. And we, in fact, in our office, we, we kind of talk about this, that there is nothing really called as Bharat Bharat anymore. Google you know, invented it's, it. It's, it's like, it's like boss, you know, ye Bharat divide ko mat karo. You know, I'll tell you an interesting data point. The data point is that there are more billionaires in Kochi than in Gujarat. Surat alone itself has more billionaires than uh, Rajasthan. So it's, it's, it's crazy, this kind of numbers and usko hum Bharat bolte hain. And that's a very, you know, wrong way to look at it because I think the money is there. Okay. And I think, and also like we said, right, volume games hain. Toh, the proliferation of CTV or connected TVs for that matter, 
smart TVs for that matter will be rampant. I don't think it's going to be a I challenge. I mean, logically, I mean, you're absolutely right. Somebody came from outside and told us this jargon of Bharat and India and we said, that sounds nice. There's a Bharat story and we all pick it up. I mean, we don't know who it was, but let's not name him. But I think fundamentally, um, look at why connected TV is growing. I mean, one, internet penetration, right? India is the top 10 fastest speeds, by the way. Just FYI, somebody was asking me this question. Number two, we are, the f we are the second highest app downloaded country in the world. Technically, obviously, population is on our side, so we become second. So, I mean, number two. Number three, internet is accessible, understandable, reachable across markets. We are a fairly well-penetrated internet country. Number four, connected TV is actually nothing. I mean, first of all, we need to understand the difference between what's a connected TV, what's a smart TV, and what is OTTs. Because technically, they're not all the same. Sometimes we use it in the same breath. And uh, a smart TV is available at less than $150, to be honest, I mean, and at the click of a button, do it on Flipkart, Amazon, it will be delivered by you tomorrow, installed. It's that accessible, right? So I think fundamentally, and if you don't have a connected TV, and if you, let's say, you don't have a smart TV, you can buy a dongle and just make it connected. So I think the accessibility part of making devices connected, whether it's in rural India or, or, or urban India, is actually quite the same, and I think uh, we see a lot of the larger brands and their advertising campaigns specifically targeted towards a certain audiences which is not urban, which also shows the mass is there, the audiences are there. Cool, I'll, I'll move to uh, Karan, I think from, from you know, uh, an investment advisory firm like Lara Capital and can you share your views on how the role of connected TV advertising in technology space or have you seen any new startups doing something exciting from a view on global perspective or you feel, you know, this is something that's I think India has yet to cope up with. I mean, any thoughts from a very different lens? Yeah, so I think uh, from an advertising standpoint, uh, you had uh, desktop and mobile advertising. So I think connected TV is going to be the next layer uh, in terms of advertising where desktop has actually become very small and mobile actually took over. So I think uh, connected TV will actually form a sizable chunk of this overall digital advertising and I think a lot of the new age and startup companies are trying to you know put in monies over there. Uh, as I said, measurement is a matter of time, uh, you know, because uh, this is a digital technology platform, uh, getting measurement or getting some technology around measurement is not going to be a challenge as such because linear TV measurement is like a big lag. And uh, just fundamentally, in a country like India, why did we see mediums like, you know, print and radio dying down because of measurement? There was no quality measurement which is there. So for, uh, you know, any advertiser or marketer to put in money, you need to have the ROI and the measurement. And uh, programmatic advertising has proved the path, right? I mean, in programmatic advertising in a country like India, today is for 45% of the overall digital ad spent by. And that is only growing incrementally because there's a proper measurement, there's a proper ROI which is there. So I think connected TV that way, uh, you know, if, if some issues are sorted uh, around the measurement part, I think there's a very bright future up there. So Jay, I mean, very different field, right? I mean, from a wealth man management advisory firm, how do you look at the media mix nowadays? I mean, are you guys specifically doubling down on proxies like size of screens, the kind of affluence on income, deterministic data on... Um, you know, this seems to be my audience versus that. And I think obviously you had a very strong point of view when you said, you know, geographically we're getting it wrong. Probably we're also getting it right, wrong from an online usage habitat standpoint. I think multiple times I've gone into conversations with brands who feel a certain publisher or certain channel of choice is not. Do you think we're moving into an era where the ad is served is not as important, but who the ad is served to? And then we have multi screen journeys that you can obviously target a user anywhere. I mean, you don't need to be dependent. Uh, See, uh, again, I'll just give you a very interesting data point again on this front. Like, the fact of the matter is that um, wealth is getting generated and created at a very, very early, early age in people's lives. I mean, given the fact that we are at this uh, juncture where, um, to be honest, you know, we are considering, we, we were actually looking at some data and we were seeing KR, who should we actually go out and target and talk to? What is the age bracket in which people should actually consider wealth management as a certain, you know, stream or service that they would want to have? And the obvious answers in the room were, hey, at least after a certain age in gap, we can consider that audience as our audience because they have a certain reach. We went back to data and we realized, you know what, there are more than, there are more than 3,000 entrepreneurs in the country who are under 30 and their companies and their organizations are over 200 crores. 
okay these are this is the kind of data that i have right now and these are under 30 they have, they have created a certain value for themselves individually as well as for their organization now can i go out and you know ignore that audience because they are under 30 no i can't if i have to kind of go out and talk to them a wealth management proposition i'll have to cater to them in a certain media on a certain platform that they are currently on and that's where this comes uh, extremely handy for me and if they are going to be on platforms where uh, you know i can serve them relevant content relevant messaging i mean that's how i'll probably look at you know what platforms i need to be on so a lot of actually data points you know that kind of give us uh, we think you know anecdotally we hear a lot of stuff saying ke yaar you know maybe wealth is not created at an early age unko pata hi nahi hai they are very but it's not true it i mean they are the way that they are actually looking at growing their incomes and their wealth and protecting their wealth is at a different level altogether and uh, therefore i feel you know uh, it's very it's very eye opening kind of a data for me to kind of not consider an audience of this size and the platform that they are on otherwise i mean that's what is driving our media decisions as to where we are in fact we just launched our campaign and i mean we we kind of gone to uh, platforms which we ideally wouldn't have gone or thought of earlier and but we had to given the data points that came up uh, and we had to actually you know talk to them so that's that's the way we look at you know what what platforms are important now superb guys i think that brings us to the end of the conversation i think we've had a very long and diverse panel i'll leave you guys with one interesting thing i think uh, which is called a rapid fire round i will not do it as as good as the guy who does it really well but he's off season so i can do it and i don't know if they have hampers check with you for him but um these questions i have not asked you before because that's the whole purpose of it i mean it puts you on a spot hopefully not a bad one so uh, the rules of the game are the same i mean you just answer as soon as you can so yeah let's let's quickly do that and uh, what do we win yeah what do we win where's the hamper uh you can take that uh, nice speaker over there i think yeah i don't know check it i'll, I'll let you guys know Okay, let's start with uh, you, Anil. I think, uh, uh, are you watching IPL? If yes, where did you watch your last match on Star Sports or Geo? Geo. Very good statement made. Well heard. Gitnesh, um, which team do you think has the potential to win the IPL apart from Lucknow Super Giants? Oh, that's a very tough call. But yeah. Uh, I think uh, last year we lost to the GT. So again, this year we are thinking. Even last match we lost to the GT. So we are thinking to build it up. Today is the match with the Punjab Kings eleven. So that's. The... So are you giving a message to another team that? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But I think. Hey, potential sponsors. Um, Sid. Honestly, I mean, who do you think is a player that really needs to sort of take the sleep in turn challenge of? the wake fit the cycle <laughs> okay uh, actually i uh, i like the answer uh, this question i had heard before and i like that answer so i'll go with that it's kl rahul <laughs> okay i think consistency this belongs to lucknow super giant <laughs> <laughs> well i knew that was coming i planned i planted that okay karan i um, i think uh, do you think uh, with this whole shark tank india and uh, the investors becoming celebrities do you think there is a scope that one of the celebrities stands out differently for you than the others are you a fan of any one of them uh personally no i'm not a fan of any of the shark celebrities nice answer any rebuttals on that no that, that's pretty much it right you know jelly i think i am someone who watches more of web series and movies so i'm not a fan of shark tank as such oh man <laughs> um so the last question to you I think which which clear um, sort of asset from IPL uh, or a player from IPL do you think needs serious wealth advisory management right now? Big Pandya. Superb. That brings us to the end of this panel. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, just raise your hands. You can talk to them, or you can meet them outside. Uh, that's us. Thank you, guys. <laughs>